Hello and welcome back to Clownfish TV. It is me, Geeky Sparkles, and I'm by myself for this one. Neon is off doing another video by himself, and then tomorrow we're back together doing videos again. So I was looking for some things for Disney stories I was working on. I stumbled upon this article at CBR. So this person is really, really, really mad that people call Ray a Mary Sue. And ever since they announced they're gonna do more um, Ray Skywalker films, well, Ray Palpatine, as I would say, movies, um, we were seeing an uptick in these articles and stuff coming out. And this person, David, who it's funny to me because uh, David's got a picture of himself with uh, Matt Smith. So right from the get go, I already know exactly what I think of David's opinion, but I, you know, I digress. Um, we're going to talk about this article about how there's a Gary Stu in, in, in the Legends and the Expanded Universe. And, and if you like that character, you can't say anything about Ray. And my personal favorite is people, you know, the vocal minority don't like Ray because, you know, she, they say she's a Mary Sue and she's not. And then this person goes on to describe every reason people thought she was a Mary Sue as valid reasons to not like Ray. You can't make this stuff up. So before I get into it any further, please like and subscribe. If you do, I'll give you a woohoo, woohoo, and we're gonna talk about it. So there's this article they're talking about an original Gary Stew. It's a very long article. The the character they're mentioning, I have you know I read the books in the 90s. Um, it's been so many years. I vaguely remember the character. Uh, I think it does get mentioned. Some people do mention the character here and there, but it's not one of the ones from the legends that people bring up a lot, like, you know, Dash Rendar or Mara Jade or, you know, Admiral Thrawn and all that. They, it's, it's, it's a character that, that is, was popular, but it's not to the level that they're making it out to be. So they start the article off in the way that you'd expect them to start the article off. Star Wars hasn't been exactly been having the best time since Disney took over. No, it has not. There are a variety of valid reasons for this. Doesn't tell you what the valid reasons are, but there are a variety of valid reasons that, that, that they agree with, David agrees with. But a large problem for the franchise has been a small but vocal group of fans decrying wokeness in Star Wars. Something that came even more acute because of Rey. So somehow there's a large problem, but it's caused by a small but vocal group. And that small book vocal group are the reason why the movies fell off a cliff after the last Skywalker and they progressively got, you know, lower and lower viewership. The vocal minority is somehow able to control the, 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 all the Star Wars fans all over the globe to make them not tune in for the Star Wars shows on Disney+. Plus. Um, apparently the vocal minority is out there sending threats and pulling guns to people's head and, and heads. And that's why they're not watching the Star Wars shows and not going to the Star Wars hotel and not buying the Star Wars toys that there are now at Ollie's. It's because of the, the small but vocal group of fans who think that the show is woke. Okay. That, that makes total sense. Ray was the main character of a sequel trilogy, a modern day Luke Skywalker. Do not even... Don't even put them in the same sentence. That's not, if you actually read the expanded universe of legends, as you call it books, then you know, Lou Skywalker was handled in a much, much, much better way. He was, you know, left a hero. Everybody got, you know, happy endings and moved on. They still had lots of things happen. Like he met Mar Jade, Mar Jade ended up dying and all that stuff. They had a lot of things, but Luke remained Luke and the characters remained themselves for the most part. And they didn't just, change the character making him an insufferable asshole who tried to kill his nephew just to artificially inflate this Ray Skywalker character. And I'm sorry, they're not the same. Even if Ray steals his last name, she's not the same. However, to a group of fans, she became everything wrong with Star Wars under Dizzy. The symbol of the force is female and other progressive takes on the mythos of that far away galaxy. Because they have been doing that, David, they have been tripling down this forces female bullshit. They really, truly have not just that, just female characters in general. Like there was no reason for Rose Tico to be there or Holdo to be there, yet there they were. They were there just to be the foil to male characters. They keep, you know, they have Obi-Wan show. And instead of Obi-Wan going to Tatooine to be, you know, where he'd be watching over Luke Skywalker, it's somehow all about little Leia, which doesn't make any flipping sense, David. There is definitely a, 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 pointed effort to do this. And this is coming from a female Star Wars fans. I've got tits, David. 
Now, there are plenty of valid reasons to call out the character of Ray, which they mention later, okay? But one of those has been used time and time again that she's a Mary Sue, a term that originated from fanfic circles. It was Star Trek fanfic, but Mary Sue. Funny story, David. So we went to see The, see the Force Awakens. Um, I went with my husband and my kids, and I had a lot of friends that went to see it. They were all men, by the way. And the only person who came out saying that she was a Mary Sue was me. And last time I checked, I don't have a dick. So mm, don't know what to tell you on that one. But she was a Mary Sue in regards to the fact that she suddenly could do things like she just suddenly knew how to fix the Falcon. She suddenly knew how to fly the Falcon for no reason whatsoever. She suddenly was able to, you know, use mind, the, the forced mind stuff on Kylo Ren when she'd have no reason to and was able to resist his mind invasions. She suddenly picked up a lightsaber and knew how to use it. It was able to fight him off when she wasn't trained and he was well trained. None of it made sense. That's what Mary Sueism is. When you have a character who's the bestest, the cutest, everybody loves them. They're so great. You know, Han and Chewie and everybody just invite her to go in the Falcon. Everybody loves you for no reason whatsoever. And you're just like the bestest, most popular person ever. And you don't have to work for anything. That's what Mary Sue usually means to people. Okay. And they go on to explain it, Mary Sue. These fans constantly talk about going back to the past Star Wars and how everything back then was so much better and citing legends. Now, this person's pissed because they're talking about Gary Stu, which is basically the male version of Mary Sue. And because in the X-Wing series of books by Michael Stackpole, Corrin Horn is a Gary Stu. He's a Jedi and an X-Wing pilot, and he was really good, and he kept being the lead character, and two girls found him hot, and all this stuff, and he's a Gary Stu, because, you know, the, he apparently had, had force abilities and was able to fly. I don't know. It sounded like he'd been doing it a while. It wasn't like he just jumped in the seat and knew how to do it, but okay. Um... Again, we're talking about a character from books from the 90s. And back in the 90s, people weren't worrying so much about that stuff. Because back in the 90s, because I was there, they had lots of movies and shows and stuff, books and everything, that there was a lot of female leads, a lot of male leads, a lot of people who weren't straight, a lot of people who weren't white, and nobody thought anything of it. It wasn't until about like the last 10, 11 years or so that we had this narrative that, thank God, Disney and Kathleen Kennedy and Andy Stevenson and all these people have come in to to break the glass ceilings, you know, and finally make it okay for women to be showrunners and all that other stuff. Never mind that, you know, women had done it before for years and you just kind of just negated everything they actually did when they're the ones who actually broke glass ceilings. But thank God they're here to do that. So you literally had to pull this one out of your ass, David. You really, really did. Goes on about all the stuff Corin did. He's really, really, really salty about it for whatever reason. So we finally get down here. He'll have this Mara Jade as an ideal candidate for Star Wars movie. I love Mara Jade. That's why I don't want them to touch her. And we all know she'd be black because she's a ginger. So we're the same thing. So they're talking about how, um, basically talking about the corn horn again. When I hear people talk about characters in the book, he is not one of the ones that people bring up all the time. But okay. So then they're talking about Back to Ray, And then they're like, Ray jumped to the head of the Jedi pecking order in the sequel trilogy, which began all the current problems they're now having. The Star Wars fan community always had a toxic element because of Ahmed Best and J Jake Lloyd getting harassed. Ahmed Best, I can't really speak to Jake Lloyd, but Ahmed Best was the journalist that started that. They were the ones that were like, it's a racist stereotype and all that. They were the ones making those comments that started the whole thing. But beyond that, I'm really tired of this whole this behavior I keep seeing over and over again. And what it basically is, is you have a couple people do something shitty and then they use it as an excuse to blame everyone else. Like Kelly Marie Tran getting harassed off of social media. Um, did Were there probably a couple people harassed her? I'm sure there were. I, I have no doubt there were. But what they did, and people like David here will do, is they'll take that one incident and then they'll use it to paint anybody who doesn't agree with their reasons, which they haven't given for what are valid reasons not like Star Wars that they take they take their broad brush and paint everyone with it. If you don't like Ray, it's because you're one of these terrible people. You're a toxic male, which he does in a minute. That you're, you know, you're one of those people that would harass him at best. You're you're one of those people. But that's not fair, nor is it valid. You know, and with Ahmed Best, it was the journalist who started that shit, I want to point out. 
They're talking about these elements of fandom combined with anti-woke crusaders who perceived Rey's entire existence as a threat to their masculinity and Star Wars. Again, David, there are a lot of people who did not like Rey and don't like Disney Star Wars that aren't men. And by you behaving this way, you are acting exactly in the same way you're claiming these people are doing it because you're disregarding women. Because automatically, if you're a woman, you have to love Ray because, you know, it's a woman. I don't have to like Ray because she's a woman. There have been really good female characters in Star Wars that I did like, like Mara Jade and Leia and um, Mothma. Um, I love, um, I like Cara Dune quite a bit. And a lot of people liked Cara Dune, which is what caused the problem because Cara Dune was an actual strong female character done well. You know, she earned her place. She had a rough history. She didn't just know how to do everything because she was her. Great character. Everybody loved her until they decided that they thought she was coded a certain way. So she, the actress then had to give them what they wanted. And if she didn't, she's a bigot. And it's the same kind of mentality here where you're just basically saying that not liking Ray means you're a threat to masculinity, except I have a vagina. So, okay. Okay, David. Yeah. You know, I, I hear Kevin Smith has a vagina too. So they said, um, they, they start with a dreaded Mary Sue claim to slander the character. Again, David, I'm the one who called her a Mary Sue. And you don't get to tell me as a woman what characters I'm allowed to like and if I think they're Mary Sue or not. Because if you do, then you're one of those terrible people who have their masculinity threatened by a woman not agreeing with you. Okay, so Potter Kettle there, David, stop telling people that they're all toxic men if they don't like Ray Skywalker. Ray Palpatine, because she's not a fucking Skywalker. If she's a Skywalker, I'm a Skywalker too. Anybody's a Skywalker because you just steal their name, steal their house, and then you can call yourself that. That, I love it. So we get to the, finally get towards the bottom of the article, and now they're going to tell us, this, this is the best part of the whole thing. After that whole, you know, thing about how she's not Mary Sue, and people don't understand Mary Sue is, and this other character is Gary Stew. Here's his reasons why there are reasons why that she could be have Mary Sue tendencies. This is about Ray. She was one dimensional and has Mary Sue tendencies. After this tirade, this is what they said. For example, she was the epitome of a character who was epitome, which means a prime example of a character who is better at everything than anyone, anyone else. However, for many fans, the fact that she was a woman was the worst part. So she's a Mary Sue, but people, but, but, but there's Matt because she's a woman. No, she was a shitty character. Like she had potential at the beginning and then you took all that potential and flushed it down the toilet. She was better than everybody else. Yes. Yes, she was. And they're discrediting her by, with, without admitting their own biases. You mean like you're discrediting female Star Wars fans who don't like Ray with your own bias that it's only men? You mean like that, David? Um, okay. Okay. So they, they clung to the Mary Sue aspects of the character. Um, and they said, Ray does have Mary Sue aspects. No shit. She was able to survive in Jakku as a small child. And, um, she became a scavenger and helped the Falcon. Yet somehow she was able to build up enough skill to become an excellent combat pilot. She knew how to fix the Falcon and fly it better than Han Solo, which made no sense. Um, well, on Jakku, you know, everyone, not everyone liked Jakku, on Jakku liked Ray, but once she met Finn, Han, and Chewie, everybody liked her. And Han, Han was offering her a birth on the Falcon, and Leia would end up loving her because she showed up. I thought your argument was to be that she wasn't a Mary Sue, uh, David, and that, you know, but you're just basically saying what everybody already said, that you're mad about them saying, because this is why she's a Mary Sue, David. I don't have to have a penis to know that. She took fighting with weapons beyond her quarterstaff very well. After being cast by Kylo Ren, she used Jedi mind trick, um, often considered difficult to master, only by a fully trained Jedi, and was later explained away by she did, she downloaded his training. And she later defeated and injured Kylo Ren in a lightsaber battle, despite being the first time she ever used a lightsaber. Yeah, that's that's why they call her Mary Sue, David. That's That's exactly why. Um, they didn't go on about how the other movies, she didn't have as much Mary Sue tendencies. They kind of toned that down, supposedly. I think they didn't really fix that into The Rise of Skywalker when they made her like to train more and you saw it and stuff like that. I never watched Rise of Skywalker because after The Last Jedi, I was out because it was so damn bad. 
but I think it's funny that Corn Horn's a, a Gary Stew, and, and you like him, but that no one ever brings up ever. Like very rarely do I ever hear anybody bring this character up. But 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 you you can't do that because if you like him, you have to love her too. She, you're just a bunch of men who can't stand strong women, but I'm going to tell you everything that that you all are saying back to you is why she's a Mary Sue, and that that is why she's a Mary Sue, according to David. But you should just forget all that and just forgive and forget and just love her anyway because supposedly people who read the books in the 90s love this character from the 90s. It's a dude. Meanwhile, you don't hear anything else about this character, but she's getting more movies. And she's replacing Luke and they're going to make her a better Luke than Luke and everything else. And that's what it's going to be. And I'm so tired of it. I'm so very tired of it. And I'm so sick of hearing it's only men who hate Ray. And, 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 and you should show your, your, all your own biases as you show your own biases that you only can see from way, your, your standpoint that it's only men who hate her. That completely everything you complain about with wokeism and progressivism. All you've done is the same thing. You have just completely uh, marginalized women, marginalized people who aren't white, straight and male, marginalized all these people because it's just their toxic masculinity. And you know, they can't, they, they can't stand her because they, they're just their own biases. I think you need to look in a mirror because that's pot or kettle from where I'm sitting, David. Anyway, please like and subscribe. Um, I'll talk to you later. Bye.